on an all-new Dr. Phil. Wonders of your... She has a dream. You want to travel the world and sing for the Lord. I would love to get a Grammy. They have a daughter. Danielle refers to her daughter as that child. My lawyer told me to give you that child. And he has custody. I felt like there was some abuse. We asked you for proof and you said, I really don't want to send you paperwork. Oh, I, I must have been very exhausted at that moment. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I'll try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five. with a question for me involving their ongoing battle over the custody of Brandon and Danielle's 10-year-old daughter. Now, Brandon claims Danielle is a terrible mother who cares more about herself and her non-existent acting and singing career than her own daughter, who Brandon and Desiree now have full custody of. Of course, Danielle claims it's Brandon who's the bad parent, claiming he is a manipulative, compulsive liar who has threatened to kill her on two separate occasions. Now, when we do these type of shows, it's often a he said, she said situation. So we ask for evidence, paperwork, documentation to back up the finger pointing and allegations. Brandon was very forthcoming handing over court petitions, copies of sheriff reports, you name it. But every time we ask his ex, Danielle, for paperwork to back up her allegations, well, she would say, and I quote, I don't want to send you the documents. We also ask every guest on our show what their question for me would be. Brandon's question was, how do I protect my family from Danielle? Well, Danielle had two questions she wanted to know. One, would Dr. Phil be willing to pay for my lawyer? And two, how does he, as in me, handle fame? <laughs> Those are a far cry from what I'd expect a mother fighting over the custody of her child to want to ask me. So we're gonna bring her out first while Brandon and Desiree wait backstage. But first, let's take a look at what Danielle told our camera crew. My ex-boyfriend, Brandon, is extremely manipulative, controlling, and does everything he possibly can to keep me from seeing my daughter. When I schedule visitations, he changes the time. Many times, he's not even there. When I'm in the middle of my court-ordered Skype visitation, and I'll just cut the camera off, it's extremely unfair. And it undermines my, my relationship with my daughter. When I'm around Brandon, I'm afraid of what he will say or do. Brandon has called me a bitch, a whore. He has a gun and has threatened to kill me twice. One time, my daughter was standing right there. This constant drama has gotten in the way of me chasing my dreams of becoming a singer and an actress. I want to follow in the footsteps of my great aunt, June Allison, who has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Lord, how the wonders I would love to come out to L.A. and get a Grammy. Wonders of your I also want to travel around the world singing for the Lord in contemporary Christian music. But Brandon is ruining my relationship with my daughter and is destroying the life that I want for myself. Okay, Danielle, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. What is it you hope to achieve with Brandon? What, what's the goal? What's the outcome? I just hope that he will be more just giving towards me um, with my daughter, relationship-wise. 
you know, he's alienated me a lot. So it's been... He's alienated you. Yeah. Okay. Well, how did... I've worked in the litigation arena most of my professional career. Mm. Um, well, I can't say it anymore. It's about half and half now because I've been doing this so long. But the family court is historically very sensitive to the mother's role in the family, mm -hmm. as I think it should be. So when I see a father having full custody of a child, I always kind of lean in and wonder how that happened. Mm. How did that happen? Well, you know, he was in the military, and I think he happened to find a judge that was very um, in favor of the military. This was actually a female judge. Yes. Wow, that's even a bigger climb. Yeah. So a female judge yeah. took your child yes. and gave it to your husband yeah. with full custody. My boyfriend actually, I, wouldn't, I was never married. Well, but gave it to the father. Right, yeah. And you think it's just because she was pro-military? I think so, yes. No other reason? There were some issues um, where he was neglecting my daughter a lot, and I, I felt like there was some ab abuse. And um, she just kept on throwing the evidence out, throwing it out. She wouldn't listen to all of my proof. Like, this is what's happening to my daughter. She's, you know, coming back to me, passing out. So. Well, did you give her proof? Because we asked you for proof and you didn't want to give it to us. Oh, no, I gave um, police report and <clears throat> I did. Well, f finally, the day before the show, you gave us two documents from your purse, a domestic violence report with your statements dated 7-31-16 and custody paperwork stating that Brandon has sole legal custody, which neither of which had anything to do with supporting your claims. On September 13th, we asked you, we requested police reports and court documents, and you said, and I quote, I'm sorry, I don't think I want to provide you with that. Oh, I'm so sorry. I would have uh, looked a little bit longer. It was very short notice coming to the show, but... I'm sorry? I, um, I feel like it was short notice, and I was trying to gather up a lot of things, but... Um, yeah, I would have provided more. Well, that was the 13th. That was several days ago. Mm. You kind of ignored the questions and changed the subject. So they asked again for court documents and proof, and you said, and I quote, I really don't want to send you paperwork. Oh, no, I didn't want to give the originals. I think there was a misunderstanding, but I do have proof. I mean, it's no well, problem. If there's any misunderstanding, it was on your part. On the 14th, we asked for court documents and police report, and you said, and I quote, I don't have anything. I'm exhausted, and I have been called five times by producers. Oh, I, I must have been very exhausted at that moment. Yeah, I'm sorry. So the next day, we asked for any information backing your claims against Brandon, and you said, and I quote, I can't find anything. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I don't have any more information to give you, which wasn't any more information we didn't have any information because see I try to do my homework I try to get documentation I try to get backup because I, I don't want it to be he said she said I, I want to help you get what you want thank you I, I think a mother's role in a child's life is critically important yeah so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you here and you're telling us I don't think I want to provide you with that I really don't want to send you paperwork I'm exhausted I'm sorry. Yeah, I had spoken with many, many different people. Yes, because I put a lot of people on this because we were having trouble. Get, I said, okay, let's. I put a whole team of people on this. Thank you so much. But all we got was a domestic violence report with your allegations and then the custody paperwork saying he got custody, which we already had. He's ruining your singing career. It's been very restricting. You said before you were not ready for fame. How were you famous then? And later... He sent me a text, lots of sexual innuendo. The things that he said to me, very inappropriate for a married man. She told us you would love to have an affair with her now. 
Wednesday on an all-new Dr. Phil. A grown man was on top of your child, and you did nothing. They claim she knew everything. Why did you not call the police? I can't tell you why. Did mom let it happen? She says she was abused over 20 times by your friend. I did not see that. She told you. She can't tell me the rest of the stuff. Is it enough that she told you anything? Mom, is it enough? Thursday. It was a story that shook Capitol Hill and shocked the nation. A congressman, an intern, sex and murder. Now, for the first time in 15 years, Gary Condit breaks his silence about Chandra Lee. The exclusive interview. The questions everyone wants answered. With the latest twist. Charges against the man convicted of her murder were just dismissed. Dr. Phil pulls back the curtain on the scandalous death of Chandra Levy. That's Thursday. You blame Brandon for kind of where you are in life right now. Or where you aren't, more accurately. How so? I've had to spend over $50,000 on traveling to see my daughter. He's moved to many different states. And um, it's been a, a big, huge expense and a lot of sacrifice I've had to make. Well, I want you to tell me about that, because if, if, he's, if he's being a jerk, I wanna, I'll jerk a knot in his tail. I, I want to, I, I if he's jerking you around, you need to tell me that's, that's what I do. Thank you. Right? Yeah. If he's being hard to get along with, that's not putting the child's interest first. Right. So he, he keeps moving around. Is he evading you, you mean? He told me um, he could have moved to New York and stayed there, but he made it a point to go <clears throat> as far away as he possibly can away from me. So he's moved to like four different states? Florida. One end of California, Oceanside, <clears throat> then the other end of California, San Diego. But isn't and now, he... Alabama. <laughs> Wasn't he in the military? Yeah. But not at that time. He was, um, he says, an engineer. So, I don't know. How, did, how is, and he's ruining your singing career? I feel like it's been very restricting to me. Because you said, and I quote, I have a beautiful voice, and you say he's ruining your singing career. It's been very difficult. How, how is he ruining your singing career? I've had to spend so much money. Because you put all your money over here. Yeah. Yeah. You said before, at a time when you were living back in your hometown, you said you were not ready for fame then. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of forced upon you. You were not ready for fame then, but you said, quote, being in the limelight will be hard, but you think you can handle it now. Yes. How, how were you famous then? Well, I grew up with my brother being in the Pittsburgh Pirates, so I had so many people asking me, you're Keith Six sister, you're Keith Six sister. I was... I had so much attention from that um, aspect. Just keep on, people kept on asking me and I just felt very bombarded and um, I just felt very affected by that. Uh, so your brother was famous? Yeah. But how were you, you were famous because you were his sister? I was very affected, I felt. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And you say June Allison is your great aunt? Yes. Did that affect you as well? Um, not very much. We, I've heard many conversations throughout my family, but... And you want to travel the world and sing for the Lord? I would love to, yeah. <clears throat> like Christian songs, like Christian rock or Christian yeah. what, what? Christian contemporary. You said, quote, I'm satisfied with the Lord. Yeah. I bet he's, I bet he's glad to hear that. <laughs> I'm satisfied for what he has for me. Yeah. But yet you're frustrated that Brandon is draining you mentally, emotionally, financially. Very, yeah. So you can't pursue that. Right. 
Yeah. Well, you're out here now. Yeah. You think you might stick around and explore things while you're here? Absolutely. Yeah, a little bit. You think bit. you might? A little bit. No better place than <laughs> Hollywood. It's magical. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Okay, well, so next, uh, from claims of withholding sweets and making her do homework to allegations of swollen feet and feeding their child poisonous sports drinks, Danielle says Brandon is a terrible parent. We're going to meet Brandon, and he's going to respond to all of these allegations after the break. We'll be right back. to call Child Protective Services on Brandon, our daughter, who is being hit with a stick by her father and stepmother. It is completely false. Brandon loves to twist things around. And later... I was in the military. I would come home on leave to visit our daughter, and she would tell me, no, you can only see her if you come in my house and spend time with me. I saw him kick. I can feel the full feet. My daughter thinks she's pregnant, and she's not. She actually thinks her baby's Jesus. I am pregnant, and it is Jesus. Do you believe this baby's the son of God? Yes. The ultrasound was performed on Haley. You say, I'm giving birth. You don't believe that. You are not a lie detector test, and you need to shut it. Before I met him, my ex-husband was a priest. He had an affair with a massage therapist. Who's now his wife? This is the wonderful marriage that I apparently split oh. up, right? She needs to leave the room. Your son killed himself with a shotgun. Peter died under her roof. She doesn't appear to have any recognition of what she's done. Do you believe that she would want your son to be dead? Yes. You sorry son of a bitch! Hey, let me finish. You are my stepdad is a sick pervert. He would have me touch him in the tub. And your grandmother knew this. She was flossing her hair 10 feet away. I never saw it. You know what you did. I did not molest you. You are willing to destroy my life. You have destroyed mine. I completely disagree with the way Brandon and Desiree parent my daughter. At Brandon and Desiree's house, everything is regimented. My daughter is not allowed to eat sweets. They make my daughter go to bed at 8 p.m. every night. She's not allowed to watch television. They make my daughter scrub the house, clean up. Danielle truly believes that we treated our daughter like Cinderella. She's scrubbing floors, sweeping, dusting, um, and really, she does the dishes, and um, that's it. I really do think that this is excessive for a child. Well, Danielle says she is desperate to regain custody because Brandon is a controlling ex-military psychopath. But Brandon says Danielle is not a good mother to her daughter. She uses her as a pawn and refers to her as, quote, that child. Take a look. My ex, Danielle, is incredibly hateful, spiteful, antagonistic, and a malicious human being. She has terrorized my family for years. Danielle has pressed incredible amount of charges against me. Danielle has accused me of threatening to kill her twice. Accused me of harassment, and she's filed three different restraining orders against me. I want to make it clear that I have never threatened to kill Danielle in any way, shape, or form. It's ridiculous. She throws these accusations around and hopes something sticks. I've had to travel to New York to go to court four times a year, spending three to $4,000 because of the things that she has filed. I can't stand it. Every single time Danielle visits with my daughter, there is always drama. I've driven 16 hours from Alabama to New York to go pick up my daughter, and Danielle wouldn't hand her over. I've had to go to court. There have been times where Danielle has purposefully made us miss our flight. Because of Danielle's games, my daughter has missed a substantial amount of school. Danielle's priorities are completely wrong. Wonders of your love, Lord. One of my biggest frustrations is that Danielle puts God singing for church and her aspirations to be rich and famous above the needs of our daughter. She wants to be famous, but she doesn't actually have any talent. 
Oh, okay. She's made some serious allegations that you're jerking her around, you're costing her money, that you are being both negligent um, and harsh and I, I guess actually abusive with this child. What do you say to that? I say her allegations are completely false on all accounts. And as a matter of fact, if anything were true, it would be what she said about me is actually true about her mm -hmm. in all how, respects. How did you two get together? Um, chance meeting while I was on leave in New York, so. You just kind of bumped into each other? Yeah, yeah. She was a waitress at the time, and me and my buddies were out to dinner. You went into a... A restaurant or a club or something and yeah we went we went to a restaurant and she was the waitress and afterwards after dinner she came with us to play pool and and that's how we met exchanged phone numbers and later on I went to the Marine Corps ball and I invited her down to North Carolina for that mm -hmm. so and so she went to North Carolina with you yeah she came down to North Carolina and uh, she spent four three or four days down in North Carolina uh, we went to the Marine Corps ball together, and then uh, she went back to New York. Okay. Why did she go back? Because that's where she lived, and it was time for her to go back. Yeah. So, did she want to stay, or did she want to go? At the time, it seemed like she wanted to stay already, um, after only a couple days, and we hadn't had like a big extravagant relationship or anything. So, yeah, I was surprised by it. And, you know, eventually I told her, you know, look, we, can, we you can't stay really. I mean, I'm going to be full time working here and stuff. And you know, this was a date kind of thing. You know, it's time to go back. So I ended up taking her to the airport, and she left. So. Okay. As it turns out, did she get pregnant then? Yes. Yes, she did. Okay. Were you taking precautions? Not that night. <laughs> you were in the Marine Corps. Uh, yes, sir. Do they go over y'all with y'all how that works? <laughs> yes, sir, they do. They, so you knew yes. how it worked. Yes, but sir. you didn't know she was pregnant? No. When did you find out? Way later on, uh, around the, I think, eight month mark, so. Eight months? Yeah. You, you were eight months pregnant? And did you know he was the father? I absolutely knew he was the father, I told him, as soon as I knew. And when was that? Um, maybe a month and a half later. I was throwing up. I got very sick, actually. I'm oh, sorry? I was, uh, got very sick. I was having morning sickness very uh -huh. badly. So in a month and a half, you said, I'm pregnant? Mm-hmm. <laughs> she tried to contact me a bunch of times, but I didn't want anything to do with her. Um, because of the display that she had when she was there visiting me in North Carolina. Um, she wanted to stay. She said she was looking for a job down there. She got an extended stay hotel. And this was only a date, so I knew something was wrong, like, right away. And um, so I really didn't want to hear from her uh, anymore. Um, so I kind of cut off communication with her for quite a while, um, where I would ignore block on my phone so there was no text message. So you never got the message? Calls. So no, no, I did not know until, well, way later on. It was, I think, yeah, around eight months or so. So she, she might have told you, but you never got she, the message? I, I'm sure she probably tried to contact me in some way. Okay, so remember. how did you find out she was pregnant? But you have refused? I was never asked. Yeah, we have not brought it up yet. As a matter of fact, this is the first time she's probably hearing about it. How did you find out when she was pregnant? Well, I was up in New York, and um, my friend had worked in the store that her mom actually worked in, and so did one of my other friends. And so we went there, and uh, we were visiting my friend, and. Um, he had mentioned that Danielle's mom was working there and said that she had seen her and she was super prego and so that I should go and inquire about it. So I went and I went to Danielle's apartment right around the corner from the store and sure enough, there she was. So. And did you think? Timeline matches up and yep, absolutely, so. And so at that point, you thought that 
math works, this could be mine? Right. Yes. Yes, sir. Did you think it was? Uh, I was, at first, I was knowing just what I knew about Danielle from the beginning. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't entirely certain, <clears throat> but after just thinking about the timeline for a little bit, and it, it, it worked out. But so. you knew for sure. Absolutely, yeah. Well, why didn't you put his name on the birth certificate? He um, didn't want to acknowledge anything about it. He didn't want to be on there. So you put an asterisk. That's what they had done. Yeah. So did you know you weren't on the birth certificate? No. As a matter of fact, I did not. Well, I found out that I wasn't on the birth certificate later on. Um, when so I when you found out, one. what did you say? Um, I was really... When you found out that you were the father, that you had a baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, well, when I found out, I mean, I drove while Danielle and our daughter was, you know, when, when our daughter was being born, I drove from North Carolina straight up to New York to be there in the hospital, um, you know, to, to see her and, and that kind of thing. Um, so the, I found out later on that I wasn't on the birth certificate. I didn't know there was something that I had to fill out, you know, or, or that I had to do, you know, to, to make sure I was on there in any, you know, way. Um, so, yeah, it was much, much later that I didn't know, you know, that I found out I wasn't on it. Okay. Well, your daughter's asked to take your name, right? She has, yes. But you have refused? I was never asked. Before. Yeah, we have not brought it up yet. As a matter of fact, this is the first time she's probably hearing about it. She feels that she's in a house with all of us. And so our daughter just, um, you know, wants to, to be more included in the family that way. She said that you're moving around, that you're making it difficult for her, that you found a judge that was pro-military, and that's why you have custody of this child. Mm -hmm. Is that true? No, that's absolutely not true. I have custody of our daughter because Danielle is an unfit mother, and she continuously interfered and denied a relationship between me and my daughter. How did she do that? Well, it was simple. I was in the military, and I would come home on leave to visit our daughter, and she would tell me, no, you can't see her, or you can only see her if you come in my house and spend time with me. And so I would have to go to court and file paperwork just so that I could exercise even the slightest bit of visitation is, with is that our true? daughter. No, it's not. That's not true? Absolutely not. You've, you've not denied him and made him go to court to get access to the daughter? I asked him to go to court to get at the exact dates and times because knowing him, he would have to go out of state and leave with my daughter and I wanted to make sure he was not disappearing with her. Okay, so did I you... asked him to go to court first. Okay, d before he could see his daughter? I... Well, yeah, I would ask him, you, can you please go to court so you don't just disappear with, because you're constantly going out of state here, there, Cal you know, Carolina, Colorado, Florida, it was so many. Did you things. tell him he couldn't see her unless he came in and spent time with you? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. I don't remember saying that. She told us in her pre-interview that you would love to have an affair with her now? Absolutely not. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen or known my wife, but I love and cherish her more than anything in the whole world. I would never want to have an affair with Danielle, um, uh, as a matter of fact. What makes you say that? Well, he sent me a text one time um, that said, on top, He's lots of sexual innuendo, the things that he said to me, very um, inappropriate for a married man. And for a Christian woman, I think it's very, you know, inappropriate. So you've not made it difficult for him to see the daughter? No, um, based on the circumstances and what has happened, my daughter has not wanted to go with him many times. She's gotten so upset, she's gotten sick because she said she didn't want to leave me she's been very upset when she had to go back with him because she spent time with me and remembering how much I love her hmm
Well, Danielle believes that Brandon's wife, Desiree, is starving her child, doesn't give her the same amount of sweets as her other children. Uh, Desiree says Danielle has CPS on speed dial, even calling them to show up before their wedding. Now, these two moms are going to come face to face after the break, and I, I, I've asked you if, if you've made this difficult. We asked you for paperwork, you didn't give it to us. We asked you for paperwork, you did give us a lot of paperwork. We got paperwork ourselves. I, I'm going to try to figure this out because my interest here is in what's in the best interest of the child. Uh, so we'll talk about that after the break. When Brandon and I were getting married, we asked Danielle if our daughter could be our flower girl. Danielle said, over my dead body. Out of revenge, Danielle called CPS on us. A social worker interviewed Brandon, myself, and my bridal party. I couldn't believe it was happening. Wednesday on an all-new Dr. Phil. She says she was sexually abused by your friend. Did mom let it happen? I did not say that. She told you. Is it enough that she told you anything? Is it enough? That's Wednesday. Danielle doesn't do much as a mother. I get her ready for school in the morning. I take her to cheerleading practice. We do our nails together, and she comes to me with her problems. People are often surprised to find out that I am not her biological mother. Danielle refers to her daughter as that child. Danielle doesn't have a connection with our little girl, and I consider her my daughter. Brandon's wife, uh, Desiree, says that the best way to describe Danielle is as a lying, immature narcissist who refers to her own daughter as that child. She says Danielle is so spiteful that they actually had to get a court order to allow his daughter to attend their wedding. Take a look. Danielle is so hateful and mean-spirited, she tried to ruin our wedding. When Brandon and I were getting married, we asked Danielle if our daughter could be our flower girl. Danielle said, over my dead body. I was upset. Two months earlier, Brandon bought me a carrot and a half bracelet. So the wedding was a complete shock to me. I was infuriated. I had to go to court and file petitions just to get my daughter at our wedding. Out of revenge, the day before my wedding, Danielle called CPS on us. I get a call from Brandon stating our daughter had a bump the size of an egg on her head. She had slipped and hurt her head. I told Danielle exactly what happened so that there would be no problems. I asked Brandon to take our daughter to the doctor and he refused, so I called CPS. And out of nowhere, CPS showed up at our front door. A social worker interviewed Brandon, myself, and my bridal party. I couldn't believe it was happening. It was humiliating. As ridiculous as it sounds, Danielle's interference did not end there. After our wedding, Brandon's family brought our little girl back to New York. And during a layover, our daughter called Danielle just to let her know she was on her way home. When the plane landed, police were waiting to check my little girl. When I spoke to my daughter, she sounded very exhausted and dehydrated. Being cautious, I felt like I had to do that. I am sick and tired of all of Danielle's nonsense. There is no limit to what Danielle will do to terrorize me and my family. She has no shame. Okay, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank uh, you for having us. What do, you, what do you say to what was just in that tape piece? They're saying that you're using your, your daughter actually as a weapon, as a tool, as a pawn to try to make them miserable. I think that's very sad. I think it's very sad for this little girl. I think they just want to exploit my family's name, come out here and get their 15 minutes of fame right now. I think this is very, they have no class. It's ridiculous to bring this little girl. They're the ones that's bringing this little girl on national television and me and making my poor little girl, making me look like I'm, it's horrible for me to try to get help. Meanwhile, he said there was an egg on her head and, excuse me, a bump on her head the size of an egg. And he wasn't taking her the, to the doctor. I'm supposed to just sit there and do nothing? Absolutely not. I'm doing what's right for my child. Okay, so you have called the police or the sheriff or CPS numerous times. If. Well, he has denied me access to my child many times, too. Okay, you have necessary. called the police or the sheriff for CPS numerous times. If it's necessary. There, if, 
it was necessary, I called them, yeah. Okay, and each time you've done this, has it been a legitimate concern on your part? Absolutely, and I have So you've tried never done this without a legitimate concern? No, and also I was told by my lawyers to get records of every time he is doing something wrong. Every time he's not giving you your child, at the time he's supposed to be giving you your child, every time he's withholding the child, every time he is doing something wrong regarding her health, any bit of way whatsoever, record it, document every single situation. And that is what I did and what I was told to do. Did they come a second time? They did. The sheriff came in again, and he woke us all up. It was incredibly invasive for whatever your selfish needs are. You're going to be in the Los Angeles area, and you want to watch a live studio taping of the Dr. Phil Show, go to drphil.com for free tickets, or call 323-461-PHIL. That's 323-461-7445. Here's the sheriff's report on April 6, 2010, and this re refers to what happened on that particular day. On 4-2, the sheriff says, I responded to a dispatch report of a welfare check. Uh, today, the child, and we don't want to use the child's name, today, the child slipped on the tile floor and bumped her head. She appeared fine and did not need medical attention. At the time of my contact, there was no indication of any crime of neglect. Danielle was upset that the child was not removed from the home and taken to the hospital. During my conversation with Danielle, she repeatedly interrupted me and would talk over me while I spoke. I personally examined the child's head for injury. I was unable to feel a bump on the child's head. Now, that's the sheriff's report. So, the, the sheriff's officers who are trained to assess the situation said there was not a problem. The child did need to be removed and taken to the hospital. Did you, did you call and have them go back out? I was advised by my lawyer to ask to get a report because he had not written a report at the time. So I, that was my main reason for calling. And I wanted to make sure that my child was okay. He had told me there was a bump on my daughter's head the size of an egg. I was very upset at that time. Okay. But so you, so he did confirm that he, he did what you asked yes, and sir. said everything appeared to be okay. Yes, sir. Did you then call back a second time and insist that they go back out that night? Because my lawyer had told me that I needed a report, so I did. And he said he would have to go back to write a report. So you had them go back a second time and get the child out of bed? 
I don't know. That's what my lawyer had asked me to do. Because the sheriff didn't say that you said they had to do it because of the... Your lawyer requested it. They said, you said you wanted to do it because you were concerned about Natasha Richardson had a head injury and later had a problem and that it was you that was concerned you wanted to go back out and do a second welfare check because you were concerned about Natasha Richardson. I was upset. About the walk and die syndrome. I was upset about that also, I think, at the time. So was it your lawyer or was it Natasha Richardson? Because you told the sheriff it was Natasha Richardson. You said nothing about your lawyer needing a report. I don't remember. And this I report was written on the original visit. I don't remember if I t had told him that, um, but I was concerned about my daughter's health. Did they come a second time? They did, in fact, come a second time, yes, sir. And how much later did they come? Um, I believe it was around 9.30 or 10 o'clock that night that they came, um, and the sheriff came in again, and he woke us all up, uh, had my daughter up out of bed and, and feel the back of her head to make sure that everything was okay. It was incredibly invasive and just just one more thing that our daughter should not have to go through um, for Natasha Richardson or a piece of paper. You don't put children in these situations um, where sheriffs have to invade their home um, for whatever your selfish <clears throat> needs are. Then why are you telling me that she had a bump on the head the size of an egg? Because I'm trying to <laughs> co-parent. That's not co-parenting if she barely had a bump and she was fine, and then you're telling me a different thing. That, and then that whole thing was written, like, against me. That's what I'm saying. You're charming. You try to schmooze everybody to make it look like, oh, your, your situation is the best. But meanwhile, I'm caring for the welfare of my child. Well. He... Kill you. I called 911. He was in North Carolina and you called 911? I was pregnant. I was scared. He was a thousand miles away. Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, live strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. Well, we're out of time for today, but we have so much more to cover. Danielle has accused Brandon of poisoning their daughter with a sports drink and even insisted their daughter get an MRI at one point. I'm going to ask her about all of that and why she had to send the police to the airport because she believed her daughter was dehydrated. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil, he has custody of their daughter. You call the police stating the child sounded dehydrated. Yes. Tell me how you sound dehydrated. Is she concerned? You insisted she have an MRI. I never insisted that. They were lying in the record. Or vindictive. You called poison control after Brandon gave your child a sports drink. Giving a little girl excessive amount of vitamin B, she could die. That's tomorrow. You don't want to miss any of this tomorrow. We'll see you then.